Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning and welcome. I bid to our distinguished speaker and trainer for today, Professor Dr. Ahmad Fauzi Muhammad Ayub. Ladies and gentlemen, so before I proceed any further, I would like to express our deepest gratitude to the Center for Academic Development, Kate UPM, for the opportunity given to Prof. Fauzi and I to contribute as speaker and moderator, respectively, for today's program, right? And thank you very much for organizing this program for everyone. And um, a little bit of a background of our speaker for today, um, Professor Fauzi. He is a professor and lecturer who is currently based at the Department of Foundation Education, Faculty of Educational Studies, University of Petra, Malaysia. His area of expertise includes information technology, multimedia education, and of course, experimental research in social science. Therefore, our topic for today is experimental designs in social science studies. I believe we're going to learn so much and engage in a fruitful discussion during our question and answer session at the end of this program, inshallah. All right. But for your information, Putus, eh? Putus, eh? Sangkut. Kak Pak Kopti ni ada ni sekejap. I would like to invite Professor Dr. Ahmad Fauzi Muhammad Ayub to start the session. Please and thank you very much, Prof. Okay. Uh, thank you, eh, Dr. Nurul Afiqah Zulkifli eh, for the introductions. Okay, and then uh, I would like also to thank you, Kate, eh, for giving me opportunities eh, for the uh, for today's sessions. And also, uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, I can see that most of my participants are students here. Eh? So uh, hopefully that by, by the end of this uh, webinar, like I said, it, this is, I, I call it as a sharing session, but we will look like uh, giving a lecture. <laughs> okay. So I hope that uh, for those who are interested eh, in doing the experimental studies, so hopefully that uh, this talk will benefit you. Right? All right. Uh, can everyone see my slide? Eh? Yes, Prof. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. Before we go, before we go deeply into the experimental design, so uh, this is a little bit uh, overview. Eh? in uh, social science studies. Basically in the social science studies, okay, student will do uh, basically two different, uh, two types of research. Eh? One research is qualitative and one research is quantitative. Eh? So for qualitative, there are different type of research. Eh? So you can do whether you can, it's a case study or you can do a, it's a, a phenomenological studies and so on. So they have a different, uh, research design in the qualitative studies. Eh? But then in the quantitative study also, we have a different types of uh, research design. Eh? For example, we have a survey study eh? for those who are interested in doing a survey to uh, to know the, to identify the differences or whatever. Eh? And then uh, on top of that, we also have a correlational studies. Eh? So correlation study and survey study is not much different, okay? But then uh, correlational study is uh, if our research, eh, if our research is based on to find the relationship between the variables, the variables. Eh? So then we have a correlational studies, eh? and on top of that, we have a case. Uh, we have a several different types of uh, research design. But then the third one. All right. Eh? Um. Sorry. I think there's some um, connection problem. Uh -huh. Sorry, uh, can you hear? Yes. Uh, and then uh, uh, loud uh, and clear. Okay. Um. Well, sorry, we have, I think we have a big problem with our connection eh, in the UPM. Not only in this faculty, the whole thing. Eh. Okay. But then the, the third the third uh, uh, type of the research in the quantitative study we have what we call as this. Uh, experimental design. Eh? So in quantitative, basically we have three, I repeat, we have a survey study, we have a correlational studies, and we have the 
experimental studies. So this this normally is the three main uh, research design in the in the uh, in the quantitative studies. Eh? On top of that, we have several uh, little little research design. Eh? But then you can put the, the 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 research design is under these three main uh, research design in quantitative study. Eh? Right now, let's focus on the experimental design in social science studies. Eh? So I'm sure that uh, among the participants in uh, today's session, uh, implementing, uh, are doing, are planning to do experimental research, eh? experimental uh, research design. Eh? So uh, the first thing is that uh, experimental design is a concept used to organize where we, we are going to organize, conduct and interpret result of experiment in a sufficient way, making sure that as much useful information as possible is obtained by the uh, performing a small number of trials. So in experimental design, we need some intervention. Eh? So it, what, what we are normally in we are comparing, comparing uh, two or more, at least two, no, no sorry, we, we are comparing, uh, you can be a group, or two or more than that. Eh? So it depends on our design. Eh? But then we need to, uh, we want to uh, investigate the, our intervention. Later on, I will explain what the intervention. So whether the intervention uh, fit to the to our research. Eh? All right, uh, these are some the, of the definition. So in as uh, Similar with other research design, okay. So, for example, in the survey study or in the correlational study, we have what we call as independent variables and dependent variables. Eh? So, basically, in experimental design, the in independent variable refers to the control group and treatment group, and eh? the, the the group that we introduce the intervention and what the what the other group is which uh, we are not introduced in the uh, with a uh, intervention. Eh? So we are looking uh, where one or more independent variables are manipulated and applied to one or more dependent variables. Eh? So we want to see whether the intervention that we introduce eh, in the in the treatment group. Eh? So that one is an independent variable. So the effect of this treatment, eh, this intervention to the dependent variables. For example, let's see, we want to look on the uh, performance and whatever, eh? performance or motivation. So that one will be the dependent variables. Eh? And then, then the effect of the independent, independent variables on the dependent variables. So we want to know what is the effect of the independent variables, the two groups, towards the dependent variables. Eh? So it's usually observed and recorded on, 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 over some time eh? to aid the researcher in drawing a reasonable conclusion regarding our relationship between these two different, two, two, two variable time. So basically in experimental study, okay, we need to have a, some sort of intervention. Okay? So the intervention should be tested eh, to a group of students. Eh? So uh, it depends on your research design. So uh, later on, we will go on the different types of research design in the experimental studies. So maybe uh, the intervention only focus on one group. So maybe in future we need another group. Eh? We need uh, something, some uh, what we call that as a control group to uh, to what we call that to uh, to make to compare with the uh, uh, experimental group. Okay. And then, uh, so this this is another uh, example. Uh, this, uh, this is another uh, definition eh, for the experimental design. So, and then uh, since this uh, in the quantitative uh, quantitative studies, so the analysis that we are going to use eh, for the experimental design, we are doing for uh, we, are do, we are using the inferential statistic. Therefore, then there there are needs eh, to have a random assignment. Eh? So your data need to be random eh? and observe the rising change that occur to the group. Okay. So, okay. so these are the some of the features of the experimental studies. Eh? So we have what we call as the 
independent variables. Eh? So I, I've, I've introduced this uh, earlier. The independent variable is the group of the uh, research. Eh? So we basically we have a uh, uh, control group. Eh? Control group is the group that we did we didn't uh, that didn't expose with any intervention. But then um, the 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 treatment group is the group that we want to we, we introduce some intervention to that uh, to that, that particular group to see whether this intervention could uh, have an effect on their dependent variables. Eh? So it depends on your research design. So some research design, uh, they, they, they have the control group, which is also have some intervention. Okay, uh, because uh, if, because uh, if some, some it, it depends some, uh, in some stage of viva, so uh, some supervisor or some examiners, they will look on the biasness eh, between the control group and the independent uh, the treatment group. For example, in the treatment group, we introduce uh, using a computer software, whatever. Eh? So let's say you are you you are introducing you are introducing the augmented reality for the uh, treatment group as the intervention. But then in the control group. You, you didn't introduce any technology, eh? any technology to this group. Therefore, uh, they, this will be a biasness eh, between uh, the, the treatment group and also the control group. So uh, you need also to take care of this control group to avoid eh, uh, the biasness for this research. Eh? So maybe, eh, maybe for the control group, even though we call it as a control group and a conventional group, but then at least we could introduce some technology, but then it's different from this one. Let's say we, uh, we introduce using uh, PowerPoint, using computer, using PowerPoint, or you can ask the student to do the, uh, do the, uh, using YouTube, whatever. Eh? So, uh, in experimental design, so make sure that there are no biasness when you uh, identify the independent variable. But let's say if you want to introduce the third group. Eh? So the first group is using the augmented reality. Eh? And then the second group, you want to introduce the normal computers uh, software or whatever. But then if you have the third group, yeah, using the conventional. Uh, that one is the really conventional. So because we want to see that without using technology, whether it also can affect on their performance. So in that case, it is acceptable. Eh? Okay, and then, okay. Yeah, that one is the independent variables. And then we have the dependent variable. Dependent variable, it depends on what you are planning to study. Eh? Basically in the experimental design, we are looking on their performance. At the end, we look on the performance because we want to know that whether the inter, especially in the education setting, uh, setting, we normally we want to see, we want to look whether the intervention towards the end could help them to perform better. And eh? normally, but then on top of that, dependent variable also can be measured for other things, eh? like, let's say for motivation and so on. Yeah. In fact, for, for the psychology in the psychology psychological field, they will test dependent variable are different depends on their their, their research objective. Yeah. So it is uh, the dependent, it is the responding variable. So these are the two things yeah, before you uh, proceed. Yeah. And then okay, these are for the example. Yeah. Okay. So for the example, uh, for example, we want to test whether uh, using a handphone eh, or uh, gadget eh, and compare uh, when you're using the uh, laptop, eh, using the laptop. We want to compare which one is better. In this case, the independent variable is a group that using the handphone eh, or, smart, or, or the smartphone eh, and the top there. And then uh, maybe in the control group is using this one, eh? computer PC. Eh? So let's say this study related in during the MCO, during the PDPR. So maybe a researcher want to look whether student study using a laptop is much better or using a, a gadget. Eh? So whether these two okay, could enhance their performance. So in this case, 
these two uh, the independent variables are referring to the these two uh, different type of intervention eh, using gadget and using pc and the dependent variable is on their performance so uh, in experimental study you can go uh, more than one uh, independent variable so maybe in future you want to not only you look on the performance or maybe you can look on the on the student engagement let's say Okay. So how to perform, uh, how to measure the student engagement? Maybe you, uh, you can use a questionnaire. But then how you want, you want to test their performance? Then if performance, you need to use a, uh, some sort of question, test, test questions eh? and so on. Okay. So uh, it depends on your research objective. What, I, what actually you want, you want to discover on this one? Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, so these are the purpose for the experimental design. So basically in the, uh, uh, in the experimental design, we want to look the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. Okay? So we want to look, for example, we want to look on the motivational exercise, SUIV. So meaning that one group will be introduced uh, with the motivational exercise, the other group may be not introducing anything. And then the DV is on the student achievement. Uh, achievement and then for the second example maybe you want to look on the effect of music yeah iv meaning that one group introduce uh use uh learn using music yeah that should be a treatment group and the other one maybe uh using the conventional way of teaching yeah? and towards the end you want uh the dependent variable is to look on the vocabulary acquisition yeah so this is an example Okay, researcher must ensure changes on subject DV is caused by IV and not other variables. Huh? This, these are the things. Eh? Normally, when we introduce in the Viva session, eh, so I, I mostly I, I involved in the Viva sessions. So we always ask the student whether, let's say towards the end, uh, their study shows that the intervention introduced in the study, so the, in the in the treatment group, which is introduced by the intervention. Uh, score better eh, compared to the control group. So we will we will we would like the, the student to defend. Are you sure that uh, the performance is better from the control group because of the intervention or not because of other things? Eh? So you need to make sure that uh, later on we are we go on the certain tra tracks in the uh, experimental design. Eh? And then uh, in the experimental design, it's about uh, testing hypothesis because uh, experimental design is on the cause and effect. Eh? Because of the intervention introduced, then it will effect on the uh, performance. So uh, this is a, a cause and effect uh, research. Okay. Right. Okay. So, uh, okay, these are the, some of the variables that normally we are we're going to uh, use in the experimental design. Okay, another thing is that you need to be aware of this extraneous variable. Okay? So, extraneous variable is any variable that you are not investigating that can potentially affect on your IV or both IV and TV. Okay? Need to be controlled to ensure result is valid. But this are this another thing that the students uh, that, that you need to be alert eh? because in Viva we also uh, normally I will also try to what we call that to, to test the student whether uh, the student understand or not or whether the student take note of what about this uh, external variable or confounding variable eh? for example let's say in this case okay okay uh, we are using uh, computers and uh, this one. Eh? So what what might possibilities uh, the external variables eh? uh, in this case? So let's say this study is conducted during the PDPR, eh? during the MCO, where the students are at home. So what are the things that uh, maybe uh, uh, the, the external variables? So maybe in, in future, uh, we, we, maybe the student is uh, having a, a private tuition or so on. Eh? So or maybe in future, uh, maybe during the testing, 
okay the student will get help from their parents or the, from their sisters in for their in their, their learning so these are the things that uh, sometimes we need to be aware and then uh, we need to also start, these are the things that sometimes that we need to control eh? so in by what how are you going to control this one eh? okay for example in, if not in the pdp in, in not in the mcq for example in the classroom eh? let's say you're doing a research during the using the face to face eh? so say so let, let, let's say that you compare group a and uh, class a and class b eh? so in which how do you to, how do you can ensure that these two group didn't discuss eh? or maybe uh, these two group actually they have the they, they have a group study or what which uh, some of the group is from class a and another group uh, some of the student in the class b so and then they have they, they have a very regularly discussion eh? and towards the end we found that uh, let's say group a the, the, the treatment group scored better than uh, the control group so in in viva normally, normally we will ask how do you control this extraneous variable eh? so so many things eh? Okay, and then uh, we have also a control variable. Uh, the control of your experiment is an aspect that stays the same. Eh? This is used to be help researcher contextual the result of the experiment. In example, the control. Okay, this one. Okay, for example, in the control as a, uh, experiment. Okay, um, let's say we have a different in terms of the by uh, in terms of the gender. Eh? Let's say we have control group and treatment group. Okay, so let's say in the treatment group we we have more female students compared to male students, and then possibly teachers also have shown that normally, eh, normally, female students uh, always uh, scores better than male. So if there is imbalance in terms of the gender eh, in the group in the group, so it might uh, it might influence the finding. Eh? So you just make you just you need to make sure that uh, both good have a, an equal not not really equal but then uh, nearly lah nearly equal in terms of this gender eh? and also other things maybe in the in terms of the social economy also you need to take care eh? so this thing are you this thing you cannot you cannot change eh? you cannot change but then you can control it by uh, during the selection. Yeah. During the session, you can control this one. Okay, so these are the control variables, and this is how we want to control the extraneous variables. So the external variable, there's some. Uh, okay, the effect of external variable needs to be controlled to ensure that there's no contribute effect on the DVs. Yeah? For example, uh, student who are having a uh, private tuition, student or uh, uh, who are having a uh, uh, discussion and so on. Yeah? So the first thing is that uh, okay, ran random assignment eh, to sub uh, our subject to experimental group. Meaning that uh, when you uh, allocate student to an experimental group and control group, okay, let's say you have in your research you have sixty student. Eh? So from this sixty student, you want to distribute into uh, one student uh, introduce uh, one student uh, you want to put them in the treatment group and a group of students in the control group so you have 60 students so uh, you can do the random assignment so random assignment you can just pick you have name 60 so you just select one by one so uh, put them either in the treatment group or in the control group or you can look on their previous performance test. Let's say, let's say their final exam last semester and uh, last year. So you can have only you have the marks for the sixty student. So you can put okay the the highest mark. They put the group A, the second highest mark in group B, and so on. The third, the remainder. So in this term, in this in in using this type of uh, random assignment, so you have a uh, equivalent students eh, in terms of their uh, performance uh, their, their early performance no no their, their later performance eh? okay so re, re, uh, the most important thing is that you need to do a random assignment eh? so that one uh, or you can do the random matching okay 
the first the 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 one that I've explained just now when you match the highest and the second highest to a different group yeah, and so on. So that one is a random matching. Yeah, if population is not homogeneous, let's say you have uh, not many students are uh, we can consider as a good student, but a lot of most of the student is co co uh, considered as a moderate student. So for a good student, we need to break it up eh, to a control group and treatment group, and it need to be balanced. Eh? The same also with the the moderate students. Eh? So we need to pair them. Eh? Similar eh? also, if you have a, a female and male and female, so you, you have an imbalance eh? in terms of female and male. So maybe you can, uh, at early stage, eh? LST, when you divide them into control group and treatment group, you can match them. Eh? So some, uh, some of the students in the, uh, female students in the control group, some in the main, um, treatment group. Okay. And then uh, selecting similar subject, okay? If uh, random matching not possible due to lack of uh, matching pair, this is appropriate, okay? Okay, in experimental design, we need to make sure that students in the control group and the treatment group eh, have a similar background, okay? Therefore, for example, if you, are, you want to test your intervention to Form 4 students in Malaysia. Eh? Form 4 is those who are 16 years old. So make sure that uh, all students in the both group, and eh, let's say that, uh, 60 students, is 16 years old and in the same school. Eh? So by selecting a same school also important, uh, it, uh, some school of thought, eh? some school during the Viva, some school of thought, okay, if you are conducting research in different school, okay, for example, you put it a uh, control group in school A, whereby the treatment group in school B. So uh, some school of thought said that uh, this is not equal, okay? because maybe school A student, uh, they have a different type of administration. So in terms of facilities and so on. Eh, maybe uh, the teachers also, maybe in the school A, they have a better facility, better teacher and so on compared to the school B. Eh? So I would, I, I would like to, I, I would like to highly, uh, highly suggest that uh, you, you, use, you use the same school. Eh? So for school A, uh, for school A, so in school A, you have the control group and treatment group. Eh, school B also you have control group and the treatment group. In experimental design, the 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 the, the most uh, we can I don't say that problem is that the most uh, difficult situation is where you don't have enough sample eh, to uh, divide into a control group and uh, treatment group. Eh? So this is the this is the most uh, the the challenges that students only uh, normally face in the experimental group. Eh? So to have, to have at least 60 students uh, to divide into control group and the uh, experimental group is uh, depends on the school that you choose. Eh? So in experimental design, okay, different books, uh, they have a uh, different numbers. Eh? So basically, uh, the minimum numbers eh, for respondent in social science we have uh, at least 25. But then some books, okay, some references, okay, uh, they say that 15 is enough. Okay? So it depends on how do you defend your, your how, you, how do you justify your, the, by selecting the sample. Okay. And okay, so these are, the, these are the other things. So we have this one, pre and post. Uh, maybe you can have the pre and post test. So the pretest um, is to define whether uh, there is no differences eh, between these two group in terms of their performance. Eh? So we have the early uh, result for their uh, performance. So that one we will be introduced in the pretest. So based on this pretest, we can identify whether these two groups have a significantly different or not. Okay. So matching participant, we have I have just uh, I have introduced I have explained just now, and we have a covariate. Eh? Covariate is where 
we in okay in especially in uh, the in the SPSS eh, software so we can uh, we can control this external variable by using uh, covariate analysis eh? so for example gender you want to control gender or you want to control the so, uh, social economy income so we can use the covariate eh? and then we go for the uh, homogeneous sample so make sure that we have the homogeneous sample so these are the example of using a covariates, eh? covariates for your uh, experimental design. Okay, so let's say we look for the example. So we have the uh, the independent variables. So we have the dependent variables. Okay? so we are interested to look at the relationship between the independent variable and dependent variables, but maybe there are some other variables eh? so this one we say we can is the extraneous variable and eh? they show they also affect the res, uh, the response of the variable so maybe let's say we have uh, this uh, experimental design uh, we have imbalance in terms of the uh, gender eh? so we can use gender as a covariate so we can put gender as a covariate. So that one you can explore using the uh, software. Eh? Depend on the software that you want to use. Normally in SPSS, we have uh, the covariate application. Eh? So covariates are commonly used as a control variables. Eh? And then also uh, we can use the pretest also as a covariate. Eh? So a covariate is just a possible predictive or possibility variable of the dependent variable. So these are the covariates. Eh? So covariates are, uh, you can control your external variable using this covariate. So at the early stage of your experimental design, you need to identify yeah, what the possibilities of your external variable in your study. If you can, uh, if you can, uh, what we call that, if you can control it earlier, yeah, if you have known these are the covariate, so uh, then it will be much better. For example, you know that gender might Effect your studies, eh? or maybe you may know that uh, the your family social income, uh, social economy could affect. Eh? So at the early stage, you divide them equally for the both side. Eh? So if you have controlled it earlier, so then there is no need for you to do a covariate. Eh? So it depends. Eh? It depends on your research. Okay. So this one, uh, this some of the, these are the, the examples. So let's say we want to look on the uh, non for the non-smoking program, okay? Effect on the uh, risk of smoking. Okay. So you want to find the relationship between uh, the non-smoking program and this one, and then we have the covariate. We have the extraneous uh, extraneous uh, variable that parent who smoke. Okay. So parent who smoke will influence the uh the smoking program eh? so for this this one group uh is um maybe one group is on the uh smoking program one and no, no, we don't have the smoking program maybe uh the intervention is a program that for the non smoking as one well, eh? so but then these are the covariate okay and then by using the covariate, we can use, you can do the analysis of covariate. These are the, the statistical types. Eh? So you can use the uncover. Eh? So uncover, for example, this one. Okay. So level of education. So this one you can give be your covariate and also the numbers of hours spent studying. Okay. So at early stage, you need to identify what the, the possibilities of your uh, astronaut variable. Yeah. So you have you have identified then, then you can use this extraneous variable as your covariate. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So let's say we have this. These are some of the examples eh, uh, for the experimental design. So just now, maybe we have the three groups. Yeah. So the two groups eh, using smartphone and using personal computers. So this is we can call as an intervention group. Yeah. Or treatment group okay and then uh, the conventional way of teaching this one maybe we can uh, known as a control group so we want to know that this the three different type mode of learning 
which one could effect on their performance. So in this case, we had a post test as their uh, dependent variables. And we control the, the external variable by using a pretest here. Eh? So this pretest uh, on the at, at the end of the analysis, we will use this pretest as the covariate when you do the and cover analysis and so on. Eh? So on top of that pretest, maybe you have uh, other external variable that which you you need to identify earlier eh? before you do you conduct your research. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Basically, in the experimental design, these are the six main features that you need to understand. Eh? So when you want you want to play, when you want to plan to do the experimental design, okay. The first thing is that you need to have a random assignment. Later on, we will see the different type because in the quasi experimental, there is different. Eh? But the the main purpose, eh, the main uh, element, eh, the main feature that. Uh, you need to have a random assignment of the subject eh? because you are doing the inferential statistics. So one of the prerequisites eh, for conducting a, a, a inferential statistics, you need to have a random assignment. Eh? So the second feature that is to compare between treatment group, okay, treatment group, the treatment that we introduced by the, your intervention and also the control group. Eh? Right. Control group also you need to define. Eh? But by making sure that control group, you need to have uh it's not real, it's not that bias bias line. And then uh, the third th the third thing is that uh in experimental design is about uh, manipulating or uh, the treatment, okay, the IVs to the DVs. Eh? So it's about manipulating the treatment. Eh? So meaning that. For example, we have an intervention. So we, we manipulate, eh? we give this intervention to a one group only. The other group, we don't give anything. Eh? We don't give the, uh, the same treatment to the control group. So we want to test whether by introducing this intervention could uh, help them to perform better eh? compared to those group who are not introduced with any. Eh? And then uh, we look on the observation of the effect of IV. So in experimental design, as I mentioned earlier, it's about how the effect of IV towards the DV. Yeah? So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's in how the, the intervention could help them to perform better compared to the other one. And another thing is that it's, it's about the control of the extraneous variable. So this one I have been, I've been discussing uh, just now. Yeah? So external variable need to be reduced and that might influence your outcome of the study. And we also need to know what are the threats or huh? what are the validities. So in terms of validity, we, we have the internal valid validity and external validity. So this one, we will discuss this later on in our, uh, in, uh, in our during this webinar, yeah? so at the end. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I, 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 I will answer the, the in the chat room eh? before that. Eh? All right. We go earlier. Okay. Just, just take a five minute break eh? because I want to answer this one. Okay. I believe that the connection problem. Okay. This one, the new time. Okay, uh, Young Jinping, like talking about learning time, addition to this equipment. So the, I'm not sure what are the, what are you are trying to ask here. Okay, what is, what are, what is the di difference between correlational study and experimental study? Eh? This question by Gao Jianzin. Eh? Okay, Gao, eh? in uh, quantitative, we have a correlational study and experimental study. In a correlational study, okay, we don't uh, we don't have the intervention actually. Eh? So in the correlation, we just look on the relationship between IVs, internet independent variables, and dependent variables. And eh? we don't have any intervention. But uh, some correlation study we do have an intervention, but then we don't compare it with other with other group. Okay, for example, let's say in the correlation study, you want to see the relationship between uh, uh, 
uh, student using handphone on the their performance. Let's say you want to look on, or, or maybe we have the Putra Blas. We want to look the relationship between uh, uh, the factors that we study eh, with the, uh, maybe on their performance. So the Putra Blas is the intervention actually. But then we don't compare the Putra Blas with the student. We're not doing the Putra Blas. If you are comparing the uh, student using Putra Blas and not using the Putra Blas, then we are conducting uh, experimental studies. Eh? So, but in the correlation, your participant, your respondent is all those who are uh, using this Putra Blas. I have a student, eh? I have a student who are conducting research that she developed uh, what we call that an, a quiz, eh? a, a kingdom, we call that as a kingdom quiz, a tutorial quiz using a game, a gamification uh, apps, okay? She developed a gamification app. So in her study, she didn't, she didn't compare the effectiveness of the gamification, but then she want to look on the student perception on using this gamification. Therefore, she are not implementing an experimental study, but she do the correlational studies. And she, to then she introduced a model. So that one, the we can we can also we can say that the gamification, the, the app that she developed is an intervention, but she didn't compare eh, the intervention for those who are not in the it's not for not using the intervention. Eh? So Gao, I hope that eh, you are clear on that. Uh pro does the control group is the same as the extraneous one. Uh, uh, this is different. Control group is something that you cannot fix and you cannot. And you cannot change, yeah? for example, the gender, social economy, these are the, the control group. Whether the external variable is different. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry. Pro, what? What? Okay. Uh, what sam sampling technique do we use for quasi experimental? Can we use convenience sampling? Okay, this one, uh, Tana, Tana, I will answer this uh, when it comes to the uh, uh, Kwasa experiment. Uh, please remind me. Okay, so we have a topic on this one. And then, uh, okay, uh, okay, Pro, uh, the experiment is not our object, but we still need to use covariate by. Okay, uh, for the external variable, Okay, you, you need to know, you, you, you need to identify earlier. Yeah? So either you are, either this external variable is, uh, is not part of your research or not, but then you need to aware of that. Yeah? You need to aware of that because maybe we don't want, we don't want your research effect by this external variable. So as, as earlier, you need to understand, you need to identify yeah? what are your external variables and try to uh, prevent it at early, at as as earlier as possible, eh? before you conducting the experiment, if you can, uh, you can, uh, you can what we call that, you can avoid this ex uh, external variable. It's much better, eh? rather than using this uh, covariate and so on. Eh? All right. Uh, okay. Yi Xiao Lu, dear doctor, if I wanted to compare the empathy of preschool in three different situation. Would the mere pressure for a correlational study rather than experimental study because I didn't interview, intervene? Are you uh, okay? This this one, eh, Yi Xiao Liu. Okay, uh, I I'm not sure what are uh, you. Uh, if you want to do experimental design, you need to have some sort of intervention. So if you just want to look on the empathy without any intervention, so might as well you do the correlational study, if you want to look the relationship between uh, in, uh, independent variable and dependent variable. But if you want to look at the differences, then you, you go for a survey study. You need to understand what is the difference between a survey study and a correlational studies. Eh? So uh, I'm not sure what uh, your, 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 your research is on this one, because you want to compare the empathy of preschool. Okay, in experiment, if you say the use the when you use the word compare here, so normally when we use the compare, we are we are considering a experimental design. Eh? If you look on the effectiveness, so these are the word the impact. So these are the keyword for the experimental design. Eh? So for us, like us, uh, for the during the examine at the viva, we will look on the keyword here. Eh? 
So if uh, you want to, you are using the word compare. So I can assume that you are planning to do a experimental design, but then it seems that you are not interested in. Uh, but then it seems that you didn't go for the intervention. Eh? So you need to look back. Eh? So do we have a mediator variable in the uh, experimental design? Uh, mediator, the, the mediator variable normally we, we yeah, in the correlational studies, eh, we don't have that in the uh, experimental design. The okay, by mommy. Okay, uh, this one, if, uh, okay, but I mean, yeah, you to, you're talking about the astronaut variable, okay? But we just want to control them, not to investigate. So, okay, this one is depends on your, okay, you can you can put it in the thesis, eh? but then also during the Bible, okay, if, eh, if, eh, you need to understand when you, you are doing your PhD or your master science, so your towards the end, okay, your study, whatever that your research, it depends on what happened during the Bible. Eh? So this is my sincere, uh, this, is the, this is the thing that I want to, uh, I want to share with you. Eh? So maybe uh, uh, in Bible, so we, students were always uh, hoping that uh, there is no, no such question eh, that we could uh, that could uh, what we call that that there is no question that might uh, affect their studies eh? so let's say for that for the question you assuming that okay so the astronaut variable so you you are not controlling it but then you you try you control it but then you don't investigate them and then but then if in during the viva okay so if I'm the examiner Eh? And I asked you the and ask you question. How do you uh, control this this variable? Eh? For example, in terms of the uh, social economy and so on. So you need to give a very you need to give you, you need to justify how you control this one, even though you are not measuring them in your analysis. Eh? So it depends. Eh? So whatever the the external variable, you need to have the answers. Eh? You need to show that. This one, uh, what what are the that you need to make sure that how do you uh, avoid uh, how do you protect your research from this extraneous variable? Okay. All right, uh, dear Pro, can we say that correlational study is a survey study? Okay, but a survey study is not always a correlational studies. Okay, uh, in in terms of the hierarchy, eh? okay, correlational study and survey study. Okay, so. Survey study is the umbrella, eh? and the correlation study is part of a survey study. So uh, normally in Viva, if you have uh, uh, normally in the Viva, so many students confuse about the survey study and the correlation study. Eh? But then uh, I'm as the examiner, okay. I will look on towards the end what are the research that you are going to produce. Yeah. So if the research that you are you are producing, uh, for example, factors the influencing predictors or whatever, or in fact you're doing the structure equation model. Yeah. So you're doing the structure equation model analysis. So in the structure economy, we look at the relationship between the IV and DVs. Yeah. So the, the 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 appropriate research design for this type of research is a correlational study. But then if you are using a survey study, let's say you want to look the differences between uh, uh, between the school A, school B, school C, or the, the differences between this country, differences between this one, or whatever, or in terms of the differences, then that one is a survey studies. Eh? So it depends. So it depends what are towards the end, what are your research is contributing. Eh? If you are your it was there your research is just doing the descriptive analysis, eh? so that one which should be a survey study because you are not investigating any uh, relationship between the IVs and DVs. All right, all right. So uh, shall I proceed this one? Okay. So you have uh, if you have any question, you can uh, you can uh, you can put it in the chat room. So later on I will answer that. Okay. All right. 
Well, that's not a five minute break. That one is a 15 minute breaks. Okay, never mind. All right, it's good. It's good to ask questions then because uh, if you have any confusion in your research, so you can uh, you can ask questions here. All right, basically these are the steps in doing the experimental research. Eh? So maybe some book have six steps, maybe whatever. So but basically, basically you need to have all these steps. Eh? So step one until step seven. Okay. All right. In step one, okay, this is the most important. Thing, the important thing that you need to determine your specific research questions. Eh? Okay, uh, for us to conduct the experimental study, okay, like for example, just now one of you uh, arise, uh, raise up the question that you are using, you are the one, the question that for the elementary. Eh? So let's say, uh, okay, uh, by Yi Ziaoli, eh? I wanted to compare the empathy of preschool in the three different situation. What would be more appropriate? Okay, so according to Yi Ziao Liu, so I don't know she or he or she is uh, she he or she want to compare preschool in three different situations. So we have the situation A, situation B, and situation C. Okay? so for you, you need to you need to identify whether your research is what are what are you. Towards the end, what are you wanting to investigate? Okay? So if you want to compare anything, so then it would be a experimental study if you have intervention. But in this case, maybe uh, Yi Zhaoling is trying to see the differences, the comparing, eh? comparing between situation A, situation B, and situation C. So uh, in the preschool, but then in the preschool, <laughs> So in the preschool, maybe you will look on the performance eh, for the search A, B, C. So uh, for, for Ziao, for Yi Ziao Lu, so your, your research design is more like a survey study eh, because you are you are comparing this one. Eh? And then need to be need to you need to understand that for a preschoolers, eh, so they cannot fill in the questionnaire, eh, so they are too young to understand. What are the items? Yeah? So make sure that this one for Yi Yi Ziaolu. Preschool, normally preschoolers, we look for the this one though. Uh, we are using a we conducting a qualitative study, maybe for the preschool. Yeah? More, uh, normally, yeah? unless unless you are you are investigating the teachers, uh, then that one you can use the quantitative. But then if your study on the student, the preschool. So normally we go for qualitative because uh, we have a very limited, eh, limited uh, what we call that, limited way eh, to investigate for preschool, eh? right? So step one, you need to make sure that whether your study is a experimental study or survey study or correlational studies. Yeah. So if you decide an experimental studies, what will be your intervention? For your experimental studies, yeah? so you need to have some uh, intervention on that, and then after you have you have understand that, then you create your research question. Yeah? But to, but on on top of this thing, yeah, especially for the students, you need to know you need to identify what is the real problem. Yeah? That what we call as a statement problem. Yeah? So whatever the design that you choose, either experimental correlation and so on need to solve our problem statement. Eh? So you need to identify your problem statement. That one can be in the step one. So step one is including the identify what are the actual problem in the current situation that you want to investigate. So after identifying the, 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 the problems, then you decide whether you are doing the, you want, we want to do, a, uh, you want to produce an intervention or you just want to look on the, uh, survey studies, eh? or you just want to investigate the relationship between this one. Eh? So in order to create the best possible, possible results, to try to make your topic as specific as possible. Eh? So when you, okay, this one for the students, eh? for students, if you want to do a research, so make sure that, um, like I mentioned earlier, experimental study, we as the examiner, we look at the topic eh, we look at the, your thesis title we know that eh, we already know that what type of what type of research design that should be implemented eh? 
So like we have the word of effectiveness, impact and so on, this might be a uh, experimental studies. And very clear cut whether this is a qualitative and quantitative. Eh? So qualitative, they have the way of writing the, the title and the quantity also we have the way of writing the title and so on. Uh, so for the survey study, correlational study and for the experimental design. Okay? So step one is very important. You need to make sure that uh, it is uh, your, your, your research should, should be your uh, research design, eh? either experimental or this one. Okay, uh, so because in some cases, okay, we can, uh, we as an examiner, we, we, we thought that this study should using a different uh, design to, 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 get, uh, to, to get a better result. Eh? But then uh, maybe the student choose the different design. So in that case, you need to defend. Eh? You need to defend. So normally this, uh, these, are, these are among the questions. So the, the, the examiner will ask why you don't use this where you don't use a survey study and when you use the experimental study and so on. Okay? So uh, you, need to, you need to prepare for all these circumstances. Okay? All right. And then after you have you you have identified what are the research design. So you decide you want to do an experimental design, then you need to define your variables. Okay? So that one uh, we have introduced earlier, the independent variable. So the two group, the control group and the, the, the control group and the uh, treatment group, and then the dependent variable. Eh? So what are the things that you want to investigate? Eh? What are the 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 dependent variables eh? and then the control variables? Eh? So this will be the second step. And after you have done that, you need to develop your hypothesis. Eh? You need to understand that for experimental study, you need to have hypothesis because towards the end, you are going to test this hypothesis. Eh? So whether the intervention that you introduce have a significant effect or not compared to the other one. So this is the hypothesis. Eh? So uh, hypothesis the, uh, is the expected outcome of the experiment. So whether towards the end, your finding will support or will reject the hypothesis. Eh? So at this stage, you need to identify what are the hypotheses of your studies. Okay? Right, and then we go for the step four. Choose the design type. Okay, this one we, we, I will uh, explain after this topic. So we have different type of design, research design in the experimental studies. We have a uh, pre-experimental pre design. We have the true experimental design. And towards the end, we have a quasi experimental design eh? and each design have a sub design eh? so later on, uh, later on we will uh, we will i uh, will explain that eh? so the type of experimental design you choose for your experiment can affect on how you conduct your experimental uh, your experiment eh? so for maybe if you choose the true experiment there is different way of uh, conducting the true experiment and also for the quasi eh? so later on i will go in detail for the research design uh, for the experimental research design, design later on okay so when you when deciding which design type you need to use you may want to consider your available resource okay? so after you have decided this one so in order for you to choose your research design you need to know your own capacity okay? your capacity for example okay if you want to do your control you have to have a two group control group and treatment group let's say so basically you need to have at least 50 students do you have, you have do you have that one okay so if you don't have that uh, 50 students for during the test okay? during the real uh, the experimental then try not uh, then uh, you need to think twice lah. so whether uh, suitable for you to do the experimental study okay so in, that, including the time also you are able to commit okay? so in, uh, in the experimental studies, yeah, so uh, basically we need to have at least eight weeks. Yeah? But depend on the school of thought. Lah. Certain books say that you can have four weeks yeah? or maybe five weeks, six weeks and so on. Yeah? And then, you uh, but then whatever that, uh, the number of weeks that you choose, you need to put some references to support that one. Okay. Right. 
And then we go for the, the step five. And then, okay, we had, we had, then we start to create a test group. Eh? So this is where you identify uh, the treatment group and the control group. Eh? So knowing what experiment design that you may, you can uh, use uh, the sound yeah, after we have identified what are the experimental design. So we look for the experimental size. It is important to assure you have an even number of study of each group. Eh? So uh, highly suggested, highly suggest that if you have two group or three group, so each group have an equivalent numbers. Eh? You, you, do, you, you, you may not to have an exact, eh? For example, 25, 25, 25, okay? So, but then it's, that should be more or less lah. Okay, let's say 23, 25, 27. So that one is acceptable, okay? So what is not acceptable that if one group you have 10, the other group you have 25. So you have the difference of 15, which is quite big, okay? So this we call, this you, you, have, you have that non-equivalent uh, size of your yeah, sample, okay? And then in terms of group sorting, okay, the design that you choose for your experiment can affect the way you sort your participant into test group. Okay, so basically uh, we have a uh, two different uh, experimental research design. We have the true experimental design and we have the quasi. So in the true experimental design, you can uh, you can randomize your your respondent, but then in the quasi. You can you cannot randomize. I'll be I'll explain in detail. Eh? But then you need to you need to be, uh, make make sure of this one. Eh? If you choose the if you choose to use independent measure, you independent measure, you must make sure that you most likely can randomize a sample participant. Eh? And then uh, you need to make sure your target audience. Eh? When choosing a participant for experiment, consider your target. Audience. Okay, let's see. Um, you, uh, you, 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 you need to make sure that your intervention that you want to pro, you into, to introduce to the students, make sure that the intervention is suitable for the student. Eh? So the target audience, make sure the, the target audience will benefit your intervention. Eh? So for example, let's say uh, my student, she's developing a module. Eh? So module for lower second, uh, for the primary school. Okay. So she need, he need to test the, the module to the primary school and at the age because she de developing content for, let's say, for standard three students and people. So he, may, he need to make sure that uh, when test this module, okay, the, the audience should be a, uh, what we call it, a third, third year students in their primary school. All right. And we, after we have identified that, and after after we have pre, where we have also set our uh, experiment, uh, our instrument and so on, then we start to do a research. Eh? So collecting research involves conducting your experiment and recording over your observation and so on. Eh? So in experimental design, so okay, this this another thing. We have a control group and we have a treatment group. Okay, so who are going to teach this one? Uh, this 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 these are the these are the questions that always uh, arise in the Bible. Eh? So we had the, the we have the two different school of thought. Eh? So some people say that the the researcher should teach, eh? should teach in the control other in the treatment group, but then in the control group the researcher shouldn't teach that group eh? because. They will be have uh, it might have a bias eh? because if you are the researcher and you are the one who developed the intervention, okay, so you have a very high intention that you want that your intervention to be better compared to the control group. Eh? So if you teach both in the if you if you the researcher teach to them in the both group, it will be very high tendency that for the control group. The researcher, the researcher will not give them much effort eh, compared to the treatment group. Uh, so that there is different school of thought. Okay. But then if you if you let other teachers to teach eh, these two groups, let's say for group A, teacher A, group B, teacher B. So that one also uh, we can argue. Eh? But then uh, maybe teacher A is better than teacher B in terms of teaching. Eh? So 
these are the things that you need to defend lah. Eh, so the the safe way is that uh, teacher A teach both uh, control group and treatment group. But before that, you need to give a what we call a workshop for the teacher how to use this intervention. Eh, so these are the things. Normally, these are the way we call it as a threat. Eh, as a threat uh, that you need to. Uh, understand you need to prevent eh? or maybe you need to justify in your research eh? in terms of the selection of the one who are going to uh, organize your experiment eh? the one that who are going to teach you uh, to use your experiment and so on okay so you need to be aware of that and then uh, repeat the experiment okay repeating your experiment can be one of the most important step to ensure that the data you collect is accurate so Repeat experiment, maybe after you have finished conducting an experiment. So after you do the analysis, yeah, and then you find out that maybe there is some result that doesn't suit, yeah, doesn't uh, favor to you. So maybe you need to conduct another same experiment at a different school yeah, to see whether, whether it will produce a similar result or not. Yeah. But normally students, uh, they only want to do the one, uh, only one experiment. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, have, I, have, I have one student that do, do repeat the experiment eh, for the following, uh, for the next year. So for this year, he are doing the experiment in the school A. And then she did the analysis and she looked for the finding. And then she repeat again the, the experiment at the different school. Eh? And then she compared these two. Yeah. maybe in the uh, during that time the, during the first experiment uh, she didn't get the result that she want yeah. so in for that time during that time uh, we have discussed eh, with my student so there are something that uh, the student didn't aware or didn't control or maybe for the first time uh, they want uh, uh, there, there are things that uh, didn't uh, the, the student didn't aware and didn't take care of. Okay? So it is important for you to, before you do the actual experiment, you need to have a pilot studies. Okay? So that's why in the quantitative study, we have a pilot studies. In the pilot study, you need to make sure that during, uh, in the pilot study, it's the same. Okay? It's, the, uh, not the same. it's a similar situation for your actual. Yeah. So in the pilot study, if the in the pilot in the actual study you conduct in eight weeks, so by right and yeah, by right in the pilot study you also need to conduct in that for eight weeks. And all the instrument that you use in your actual should be tested in the pilot. So during the pilot study, you will identify what are the possibilities uh, problem that you are going to face during your experimental studies. Yeah. So. Uh, some some students they are they are not they are not aware about this pilot study and then they think that this pilot study is less important compared to the actual study. But then to me the the pilot study is important yeah? because uh, if if something wrong in the pilot studies yeah, whatever problem that you tackle in the pilot study you can uh, you can uh, you can identify and then you can resolve it uh, and then you can aware of it during your uh, actual studies okay all right so in basically in the uh, the experimental design we want to compare the hypothesis whether uh, the intervention uh, have produced a significant performance compared to the control group and then towards the end to provide a meaningful explanation to a research finding okay? so these are the two uh, uh, what we call it, the two main function for the experimental design. Okay, so these are the some of the elements in the, uh, the, the in the research design. Okay, okay. The first thing is that the, the random assignment. Okay, I, I, I I've stretched this thing so many times. So in experimental design, you need to have a random assignment. Okay. So uh, in true experiment and in quasi experiment also later on I will I will I will explain how to do the random assignment for the true experiment and the, for the control uh, for the quasi experiment. Yeah? So the random assignment is important. 
and then uh, the treatment or uh, the intervention or the manipulation. Eh? So these are the symptoms. Eh? So the manipulation, and the researcher needs to determine a suitable set of situation and introduce treatment to the subject being studied. So the intervention, you need, you need to make sure that the, what are the intervention. So the intervention should be suitable for the respondent. Eh? And then you look to the effect. Eh? The effect of changes in the situation can be also on the DV. So the effect of the intervention, eh, sorry, the effect of your independent variable and eh, the, uh, the intervention is towards the, on your dependent variable here. Eh? And then this, this uh, the situation set must be appropriate to human objects. Eh? And then you need to understand whatever the intervention that you introduce to for your experimental study, it should it does not cause a permanent change. Eh? Okay. So meaning that meaning meaning that if you are you are using a gadget eh, as your uh, intervention, so make sure that after you have finished your experiment, the student, uh, the the respondent, uh, should be able to learn without using gadget. Eh? So if they they have they they need the uh, things that eh, they what we call as a permanent change. Eh? So. Permanent change that meaning that after you do, you complete your experimental studies, the student is back to the square one. Uh, the student will be back as the as, be, as before. Eh? You you conduct your experiment. Eh? So make sure that there, there does not cause a permanent change. Okay. And then observation. Okay. So uh, okay, in experimental study. Even though you are not doing a qualitative, eh? normally when we talk about observation, it's more on the qualitative. But you, uh, even though you're during the test, eh, the one that conduct your research is your, you, you ask someone, eh? maybe other teachers to conduct your research, but then you need also to be involved in the research. Eh? So maybe you can sit at the, at the end, uh, at the end of the class, and observe. Okay? So you also need to, because um, part, uh, participant observation, you can have, uh, you, maybe you can generate a new uh, finding or new ideas okay? on the, based on the observation. Okay? So you can, it, it can also help it as part of your uh, findings. Okay? Measurement system must be valid and reliable to ensure empirical data collected as evident is valid for this one, okay? Unless you are in, in a, at a least stage that you are planning to do a mixed method. That one is a different type of research design, eh? The mixed method where you combine the quantitative and the qualitative. So maybe if in, in, in at the earlier stage, you want to do a mixed method, whereby for the quantitative study, you are implementing an experimental study and to support your finding, then you introduce you are uh, collecting a uh, qualitative data whereby maybe you you put it as an observation eh? and also you can or you do it uh, interview interviewing the respondent so that one will be a mixed method eh? but then in this case if you are not planning to do a mixed method observation referring that you look on the student behavior during this one eh? so maybe you need to make sure that and the thing is that you need to make sure that the teacher that uh, you have trained uh, uh, use the uh, conduct the intervention is uh, as what you want. Eh? Okay, and then measurement system must be very available to ensure that this one. Eh? So to make sure this one. And normally we have this. Eh? Eh? So in most of our research, we need to have a pre-test and post-test. Eh? So pre-test and post-test doesn't mean you need to have a performance test. Eh? Okay, let's say uh, towards the end, your DP, your dependent variable, you want to investigate on student motivation, let's say. Eh? So, but then you also need to make sure that at early stage, before you conduct your experiment, you need to test their early motivation. Eh? So then you can do the, Pre-test for motivation. Eh? So that one will be uh, will be your covariate. Eh? So at early stage, you may make sure that both groups have the similar 
uh, motivation. Eh? Therefore, you can uh, you can say that there is no biasness in your research. But, very, but most probably, um, most in research, we are doing the pre-test and post-test based on their performance test. Eh? But then you can also do the pre-test and post-test not based on the performance test. You can be from other different type of instrument. But it depends on your research objective. Okay. All right. Okay, we come to this uh, type of experimental design. Okay, uh, I want to answer some other question first. Okay, All right. Uh, okay, which one? Okay, from Nohakima. Okay, okay, from Taklid Ismail. How long does the intervention last? Okay, it's four weeks. Okay. All right. Okay, there are different school of thought. Eh? Some school of thought is based on weeks. Eh? So in, but then uh, if one week you have every every day, okay, uh, if in a week eh, you have only one period, eh? or maybe uh, one week you, you just allocate 40 minutes for your experimental, uh, for your testing, then in that case, maybe, Eight weeks is enough. Eh? Six to eight weeks is enough. Eh? Depend on the number of hours that you use your intervention. But then, if your intervention, eh, based on one week, you, you use your intervention for three times a week. So that one you can calculate based on the numbers of hours eh, that students use the intervention. Eh? So that one might, might probably four weeks is enough. But it depends. If four weeks every week, how many times that the intervention introduced? Okay, so then you need to support this one by uh, references. Yeah? Okay, uh, okay, uh, okay, uh, okay, okay, uh, okay, okay, in, in, you need to understand eh, for an experimental design, okay, you have an intervention, okay. Basically, in the, for the intervention, before you start your experimental, uh, the week zero, I, I can say the week zero, you just introduce the, the intervention to the student. Eh? Let's say, for example, my student are using the apps. Eh? So the week zero is that uh, they ask the student to be familiar with this one. Eh? So these are the introduction. Eh? So week one, they are start using that one. Eh? So they are start using that one. So normally in the week one, they are get used to it. Eh? Get used to it, get to understand it. Eh? And then get to, uh, get to week, week two, it's time for them to get familiar with that one. Eh? Familiar that one. And then week three, they just to understand to use that. Eh? So you, you, need to, you need to give time for the student to, what we call that, to adapt your intervention first. So if you are testing, if your testing is only limited for three weeks, can you imagine that for week one and week two, they are, they are in the familiar, familiar stage. And by then, the time the week three, you have conduct your post-test. So of course, you are might, so whatever that the result that you get eh, for, for a very short uh, time, so it will it will not based on the, the intervention because maybe the you don't give enough time for the student and for the respondent to get familiar with your uh, intervention. Yeah? So that's why you need to be understand. Yeah? So to, uh, to take to determine the duration of the experimental day is based on how many contact hours that you uh, the, the, the respondent use for this one. Yeah? Okay, uh, by son, eh, son. Okay, Prof, I want to know the influence of different teaching methods on learning, but the time, uh, but the, but the time spent on learning after class will affect the result. How can we control it? But the time spent on learning after the, okay, uh, okay, this one, okay, you want to introduce the different teaching method, but you need to understand after. After uh, your 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 experimental is based on, let's say for forty minutes, eh, during the class, eh, but then after the class during at home, they 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 will they will some student will learn more, eh, some student will study and so on, eh, so in this case, 
you can control the time spent on learning after class by uh, by asking them. Eh? So how many how many hours that you produce eh, you learn after class? So the, you can use this as your covariate. Eh? So this one you can control that. But then you need to ask in the questionnaire or whatever. Eh? So you need to ask uh, items such as uh, how many hours that you spend for uh, for study after the class. Eh? So the data that you receive for the uh, that you have for the time spent, then you can use it as your covariate. Okay. Uh, you cannot control that one. <laughs> okay. You cannot you cannot say the student. Okay. Uh, make sure that after school hour you don't learn at home. You 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 don't you you don't ask the student to do that. All right. Uh, okay. Center of kid. Okay. Please the online attendant. Okay. Please click the, for the online attendant. Okay. Okay, uh, Tang Khan, can we have the slide after the lecture? Okay, I try to give in the this in the in the chat room. Eh, later on. Okay, please remind me, eh, Tang. Ask me uh, can you share the copy of okay the copy this one later on? Uh, yes, please. I would need it too. Oh, this this is not question. This is request. Okay, is it a must to have a mediator or moderator for a master level? Okay, this one is something different. All right, okay. Uh, mediator, and moder mediator and moderator is not related with the experimental study, I, I think. Eh? So uh, I never cross that we have a mediator and moderator in the, in the, uh, in the experimental study. But then for other, eh, for example, for you doing a structure equation model, Okay, Muhammad Mujahid, I am not sure you are enrolled in which faculty. Okay, but normally, normally, okay, mediator and moderator when we conduct an structure equation model. Okay, or moderator and mediator normally we uh, in the correlational studies. Okay? So uh, for PhD level, okay, we should uh, we should have either mediator or moderator or both. Okay? But then for the master level, it's exceptional. Eh? So you don't have to have the mediator or moderator. So if you are doing the multiple regression, maybe you just look on the factor that influencing. Or you're doing the structure equation model, it's just uh, okay eh? to have a model without a mediator and moderator for a master level. But then for a PhD, you need, you need to understand that PhD is one uh, level up from the master. So if a master student, uh, create a model without the mediator and moderator, then uh, the PhD should have a mediator or moderator. So you need to plan eh, your study on that. Uh, do you have template? Oh, this one is different. This one, this one you need to have a, sorry, this, this one you need to ask your STS. Okay, I am not sure uh, Mujahid, we are in your which faculty. But uh, it depends on the faculty and also it depends on the supervisors. Eh? So uh, to do the minimum and maximum, it depends on your supervisor. Some supervisors are from different background. Okay. Some supervisor like me, okay, I will I will I will challenge my student to do more. Okay? For me, my 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 understanding, my my what we call that, my my style lah, eh? uh, you are doing PhD once in your life. Eh? So whatever you want to do, then you need to go deep on that. Eh? So you, uh, to me, I try to push my students to do uh, as many as they can. Eh? So it depends on the different, different supervisor, different way of uh, uh, supervise, supervision. Eh? Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a norm or trend. I usually saw the social science dissertation start the relationship of Kaitan. Uh, it depends on your research. Eh? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, so uh, your, your, your thesis title will reflect on your, to your, on your final finding. Eh? So if you are doing the relationship, so it's okay. okay? Some is exceptional and some is not. Eh? So in the internet, when we do when we studying PhD or masters, it depends on during the viva and also during the meeting. Yeah. All right. 
is compulsory to uh, e, e, okay e, is it compulsory to run normality test courtesy and skewness okay uh, uh it is a must eh, for for you to run a normality test called courtesy and skewness because one of the prerequisite for you to conduct your experimental uh, your 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 uh, what we call that inferential statistic eh, that you need to make sure that your data is normal eh? Uh, do you have tips on how to how to deal with the, the uh, then this this one you need to read more lah uh, how to from a from a normality test you need to uh, you need to know how to control this one eh? so if towards the end if you cannot if you still you find out that your data is not normal then you can do a non parametric uh, analysis so we have parametric and we have the non parametric eh? Okay, uh, the the biasness and suggestion statement. How to deal? Uh, how can the research to uh, to defend statement judgment? This one, uh, I'm not the biasness in terms of what I'm not sure. This one, number six, eh? Muhammad Mujahid. I'm I'm not. I don't. I'm I'm not clear with this one. In repeating, I mean, then can we show different group as our control group and treatment? Yes. Uh, well, you, you you can use you need to use for the different groups. You cannot use the same groups. Eh? So maybe in the different school or whatever. Eh? So you cannot use the same student because the same student exposed in the same thing. So we get the same result. Okay, when designing post test control between subject experiment, what is the procedure exposing the participant to the stimulus? When designing a post test control between subject experiment, what is the procedure exposing the principal to the uh, okay I'm not, I'm not I'm not I'm not clear with this one okay. when designing post test control between subject experiment what is the procedure exposing the participant to this one what are the procedures the procedure that then make sure that intervention is uh, suitable for them I'm not sure I, I'm not sure about this question uh new vaccine on the work is free Oh, this one is just something different. <laughs> okay, Muhammad Roshwan Kamal. I heard that the developed country test new vaccine and the world country is free. Eh? Is it logical when we need random samples? Uh, actually, what are you? I'm not sure what are you investigating. What is the relationship and what is the relation between having a vaccine free and what are you are going to study? So, are you going to test the one who received the vaccine free and not free? Uh, this one is not clear. Eh? So if I have uh, people identity, which is about the mental group, I, be, I better you not use experimental study, right? Uh, okay. Young Jiping. Uh, okay. This one is under permanent change. I better not use the experimental study. So it depends on what are the, what are the interventions that you want to produce, this one. You say that experimental study doesn't cause permanent change. So I, if I am a study on identity, people identity, which is about the metal growth. So are you are you producing, are you introducing some sort of intervention here, Yong Jiping? So or are, are you just looking for observation? Yeah, yes, yes, doctor. Yes, proof. Okay, you 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 what 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 are the, the nature of your research here? Uh, actually, I want to, and uh, I, I'm planning to uh, just uh, control those uh, a group of teachers and uh, in the uh, teachers community, teachers okay. community, and the other they are not in natural. They have no community. So you're comparing the teacher in the community and non-community. Yes, yes. To compare oh. the influence of community on their identity. Okay, uh, you can say the community is your intervention, lah. Isn't yes. it? Yeah. Uh, that one it depends. If, if you don't want to do the experimental study, uh, uh, if 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 what is your objective? You want to look on what towards the end? What is your DV there? Um. Actually, uh, uh just uh, uh, the the DV is the uh, IV is the uh community. They they are uh, you know just uh, yeah. the people's action in community. Uh, still, the uh, teachers yeah. are in the uh, yeah action in community. And, and the DV is their uh, performance, uh, their improvement of uh, their, uh, their okay. the improvement of the identity. So, uh, okay, if you 
in that case, uh, you can have this one. Okay, let's say you have enough sample for teacher in the community. Okay, so mm -hmm. maybe you can look, can you go for a correlational study? Let's say if your tendency to look on the uh, relation between IV and DV, and the same and uh, the same research you can do for the community. And towards the end, you have finding from the community group and you have finding from the non-community group. So you can compare this result. That one is you're not you are not introducing a experimental study, but you you do your research to different type of uh, uh, community. Eh? So yeah. that one. So if you're experimental study, then it's different. You need to have a very clear uh, community and non-community is, uh, is not likely an intervention. That one is just you divide this group into community group and non-community group. So what, we, what, I, what I mentioned about the intervention is that um, you, you need to produce some stimulus, eh? something that, uh, that would, uh, by introducing this one to a group, whether it would affect that group. Eh, in the in terms of the IDV. Uh, for your cases, okay, you just choose those with your community and non-community. So this one is not uh, really an intervention. It's just somehow you choose. Let's say, uh, let's say in my study, I choose rural student, one group. And the other one is uh, urban student. That one is not intervention. That one, in, that one is on based on the situation. So if my my if my study okay, uh, like I have a student, I have a student uh, conduct that similar research. Okay, she developed a module. Okay, and then in her study, she want to see that this module is effective, if the effective effect or not to a rural student and to the uh, urban student, and therefore for her study. She conduct a uh, experiment in the rural student, whereby she select a school at a rural one 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 rural school. So she choose a control group and experimental group at that rural class school, and uh, so she conduct a similar yeah, using the same model to urban school. So she have a control group and uh, experimental group in the urban school. So based on these two results from the urban and uh, experiment. She compared the findings. Eh? Okay, so it depends. Uh, it, it looks on uh, your 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 GP, eh? So yeah. it, it depends on how. What are the thing, Actually, what are the objective of your research? Eh? So mm -hmm. I'm not sure this one. So you want to complete non community and community. So either you can do similar uh, research based on these two. So similar research meaning that I don't want to do a correlational study or experimental study in these two group. And or the other, but then you cannot compare. You cannot have one group in the community group and the other group in the non-community group. Yeah, uh, that one. Uh, what we call that? Uh, that one is not really an intervention, lah. Eh? Okay, I got it. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think most of the question is on towards the end. Okay, now man, I'll I'll continue with this. Uh, this uh, our this one, eh? then I come back to the questions. Okay, in experimental designs, because some of your question is related on the uh, later on. Okay? okay, in experimental design, okay, basically we have three different types of experimental design. Okay, we have a pre-experimental design, we have true experimental design, and we have a quasi-experimental design. Okay, so these are the three different type of experimental design okay we go one by one okay pre-experimental design is okay and the simplest form of the experimental research design so in the pre-experimental design normally eh, normally we have uh, we don't have a uh, have a little or no control over the external variable so in the pre-experimental design normally in a social science it's a very weak design lah, eh? So this design do not random student because uh, most of the pre-experimental design, they don't have a control group, eh? most. Eh? So they, they only have a treatment group. Okay? So this design do not randomly assign subject to different treatment. 
and as consequence, the result of a test using preliminary are uh, difficult to interpret. Yes. Okay. Okay. In the pre-experimental design, we have three different type of research uh, of design. Eh? The first thing is a one shot case study. Okay. okay you, you can look at this diagram. Okay. X is the treatment, eh? the intervention that you you introduce, and O is the observation or the dependent variables. Eh? So uh, in this case, they have only one independent variable. So in this case, you give a treatment to one group uh, to to this to uh, to to this group, and towards the end, you look for the uh, observation. Let's say you have a module. Okay, so you go, you give a module to one this group, and towards the end you give their performance test without conducting a pretest. Okay, eh? so what are the weaknesses of this one shot case study? The first thing is that you you are not sure that the pre your the the what we call it the earlier uh, performance. Eh? You you don't you don't measure the early performance. So maybe we can say that eh. We can see, we can assume that these students are good. Eh? So you give them to use a module and towards the end you give a test. So maybe the, this student don't need, don't need this module to learn. Maybe they are from a good student. Eh? So we cannot compare the pre-test and post-test here. Eh? So uh, we can, this, this type of uh, design is very, uh, is, is weak eh? and is very argue, argument. Eh? It's, Okay, so this is what we call as a one one shot case study, because there is no control group again which to make comparison. It is a weak design. Any changes noted are merely presumed to have been caused by the event. Okay, and then we have the one group pre-test and post-test. Eh? So uh, compared to the one shot, okay, in one shot you don't have the pre-test, but then for the one group pre-test and post-test design. We have a pretest and post-test. So, for but then we still don't have the uh, control group here. We only have a treatment group. Okay? So uh, this this design is better than the the one shot uh, design, eh? because you can compare the result for the post-test and pretest. We can look at eh, whether there is significant difference for the post-test and the pretest. But however, you don't have the treatment group at uh, the control group. So people will argue, eh? so if you choose this type of research, people will argue that maybe uh, without this intervention and you, you conduct the same research eh? without this intervention, the control group also will uh, achieve better in terms of the post-test compared to the pre-test. Eh? So therefore, we can consider this still weak, eh? but then it depends on the research. Eh? Some research, as I mentioned earlier, some research we are uh, some research you have a diff, uh, you have problem with the design uh, you, you have problem with the selecting the uh, respondent eh? so you don't have enough 60 respondent eh? so then in that case maybe you need to do the this one group pretest and post test design eh? so in this case i want these are the things and then uh, static group okay Static group comparison. So this one you have a control group, but then you don't have the pretest here. Okay? So both have the post-test, but without the pretest. So this one also still argue. Okay? So we can still argue about this design eh? because you don't have the pretest. So we can say that, let's say that this thing, uh, uh, maybe the student are good. Eh? Without, without having the intervention, then maybe they, they, are, they, are, they also can achieve better. All right, so we have finished the for the one. Now we come to the true experimental designs. Okay, in the true experimental design, okay, uh, is where you, you need to randomize your uh, respondent. Okay, let's say in the true experimental design, okay, uh, you have 60 students from class A and class B. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Or that one you uh you have uh, you have, uh okay from class A, class B, 60 students. Then from this 60 student, you pick up randomly randomly, and certain students will be in the 
control group and certain student will be in their treatment group. So maybe you can, you have half of the student in the control group and half of the student in the treatment group. Okay. So in this case, uh, what, if you're implementing this, so you are doing the true experimental design. Okay. For example, I have my student okay, conducting a research where uh, his research is conducting after the office hours, uh, after the school hours. Meaning, where, meaning that after the, uh, after school finish at two, so she he conduct a tuition to a student. Eh? He conduct an experimental test eh, to a student. So 50 plus students are attending after the school hours. Eh? So, so based on the 50 uh, students, so the my, my student they divide the student randomly. Or in, in that time, yeah, he is implementing the matching pass. Eh? She have the, the current uh, performance of the students eh? using the pre-test. So based on the pre-test result, he divide the student into the control group and the treatment group. Okay. So if you have, if you uh, if you randomize your respondent at the early stage, then you are conducting a, uh, the true experimental design. Later on, we have the other, what we call as a quasi experimental design. Okay. So these are the difference between these two. And for the true experimental design, which we have, we have, we have said that we have select the student randomly. So we have the pre-test and post-test. Okay? And we have the only post-test. So post-test only control group design, whereby in here, we don't have the pre-test. We have the control group, we have the treatment group. Okay? But then we don't have the pre-test here. So we, we, we can still argue about this one. So we, we actually, we don't know eh, about their early performance. So it depends on some, some randomized, uh, if you are doing the matching pair eh, using the pretest, so then you can say that you have gonna pretest. But then in the case if you are you are randomized students, eh, so let's say you are you have 16 names, eh, so you just randomize pick a name here, group A, group B, and so on. But whether you don't know, you still don't know what are the the the, the current the previous uh, performance. Eh? All right. And then uh, this is the pre-test and post-test control group design. Where compared to this one, this one the post-test control design, this one the pre-test post-test. So we have a pre-test here, and then we have the post-test here. Okay, right. This one is uh, much better, lah. And we have more complicated uh, design, which we call as a Solomon for group design. Okay, in a Solomon for group design. Okay, you need to, to have four group. Okay, four group here. So meaning that you need to at least have what, 100, 120 students. Okay? So based on 120 students, so you uh, distribute this 120 students randomly, yeah? randomly to a four group. Yeah? Group A, group B, group C, and group D. Yeah? So basically we have the treatment group and we have the control group. For the treatment group here, so we have uh, group A, group B for the treatment group. Eh? So group A, we give the pre and post test, but then for group B, we only give the post test without the pre test here. Eh? Similar with the control group here. So control group, we give the, uh, we have the pre test and we have the post test, but then the other one is dependent on the person. Eh? So uh, if you choose, if you want to choose this, this design, it depends on what, uh, what are the objective that you want? Eh? What are the things that you want to investigate? Eh? So the, you can you can have this one, but make sure that you have the enough capacity lah, eh, to, 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 to use this design. All right, so we have finished with the true experimental design. So we come to the last one, the quasi experimental design. Okay? So for the true experimental design, you can randomize students to the different type of group. Okay? But then in certain, certain uh, research experimental design, you cannot randomize the student. For example, if you conduct your research at the school, okay? So if you want to do a true experimental design, meaning that you need to have 60 students and you need to have to randomize. But then in during the school hours, the, stu the students are bound to the timetable, eh? to the timetable and time. Eh? So you cannot do the randomize. Eh? You cannot separate the student to different 
uh, different type of uh, school, a uh, different type of group. Unless, like my student, he conducting the research of after the school hours, so he can randomize. But if your research is during the school hours, very difficult you want to randomize them eh, in terms of the management. So in that case, we do the quasi-experimental design. Eh? So quasi-experimental when 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 you cannot uh, you can do you cannot do the randomize. Eh? So um, meaning that it, uh, the student is in the entire group. Eh? So for example, if you choose you choose a student group A and you, if you have two class. So group A is for the control group and group B for the experimental group. So this student will be in the same group towards the end. Okay. So how we are how are we going to do the uh, randomized in the quasi experimental design? So as I mentioned earlier, that uh, for you to do a experiment uh, for you to do the differential statistic, you need to do the randomized. So for quasi experimental design. Let's say you, you want to, you have three groups. Eh? So you choose class A, B, and C, three different type of class. So you put these three different type of class in the bowl, and then you select, okay, this group for the control group, this group for the treatment group one, and this group for the treatment group. So that one is the randomized process, can consider as the randomized process, but then we don't randomize the student. We randomize the classes to uh, for the groups, okay. So we still can do a quasi uh, a randomized using the quasi experimental design, eh? But then in the quasi experimental, the disadvantage not as many variable control as well, okay? Right. So in the quasi experimental design, okay. So we we have similar, eh? So if you have a pretest and post test, so we call it this a done equivalent. Group design. Eh? So this one, the pretest and post test, non equivalent group of tests. Eh? So you have a pretest here, you have post test here. These are the intervention. But then the difference between this one, the, the group is uh, from the intact group. Eh? So intact group meaning that you cannot uh, randomize the students. Okay. And then, or you can have a time series. Eh? So this one, you don't have a control group. Say let's say you 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 only have one group, okay? So in a one group, so you need to do a um, various type of uh, what we call the various sort of measurement here, okay? So meaning that uh, this is the, the 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 measurement that you want to use for only for one group, okay? So this for the M one, M two, M three, M four, M four. This is the different type unit of treatment. Eh, that you introduce this one. So this is no, no randomized, uh, randomized. And then for the multiple time series, similar with the time series, yeah. But then for the, this one, you have a control group. You have a group A and group, group, group A and group B. Okay? So when the multiple series is to add a control group to a research group, which control group, this one is, will be this one. Yeah? So you, you, you still look for the, same measurement, but then uh, this one you have a control group and this one you have the uh, treatment group. But in the time series, you only have the uh, treatment group and the experimental group. All right. And lastly, we have this one, counterbalance. Okay? So uh, counterbalance, you need to have at least four group here, okay? Or depend on, or you can also have to build. But in the counterbalance, we can see that okay, in in this diagram, we have four different types of treatment. Okay, intervention, intervention one, intervention two, three, and four. Let's say this one is the conventional without using any intervention. Let's say this one using computer, this one using gadget, and this this one using apps. Okay, so you can see that for a counterbalance design. Every group will be using the intervention. For example, for group A, so they are using the uh, T1, T2, T3, T4. For group B, T4. You see, every treatment will be introduced in each group, but in a different uh, time. Okay. So, for example, for the first phase, okay. 
So group one, A, T1, this one, and then after the after finish this one, they give the test measurement, and then the second one they change and so on. Okay. So this will be this is the counter balance. So how to analyze this one? You can analyze it this. Alright. Okay. Okay. These are the summary of this one. Okay. Okay. This another thing, important thing for, eh, for we to for us to to be aware and the threats of for the experimental validity. Eh? So basically, this also one of the favorite question that we'll ask during the viva. Eh? So about the threats, how do you control the threats? That one, the, the the previous one, we are talking about the external variable and the control variables, but this one is different. This one, the threat. So basically we have the internal validity and the external validity. So internal validity is the extent to which can be confident that a cause and effect relationship is in the study cannot be explained by other factors. Okay? So how do you want to uh, justify? Based on this stress, eh? okay. Uh, internal validity measure this one, this thing. Okay, basically, um, these are the threats. Eh? So the history, testing, instrumentation, selection, and so on. So I will go uh, one by one for each of these threats. Okay, history. Okay, history refers to an event occurs between the pretest and posttest that affect one group. Okay, let's say during the MCO, I have one student facing this history. Okay? So during his research, okay, she, he conducted research during before the MCO. After he finished her research for around three weeks, then the government announced the MCO. Okay? And then the MCO, we have certain duration after six months, okay? whereby the six months, you don't, you, you don't have class face-to-face. -face, eh? Because uh, the, for the first three weeks, he conduct uh, her, his research is using the face-to-face, -face, then MCO. Then after that, we have a break for the MCO. Okay? So in, in these cases, the MCO is the, the something that, that, inter, that the, the, the MCO is the event that occurs between the, my, my student's research. Okay? So he cannot continue her research after the MCO, he cannot continue research because the, the six month could affect on the student motivation, performance, and so on. Okay? So this is what we call and the history uh, effect. Okay? So if it is something happened between your pretest or process, or something happened during your, your research, your, your experimental studies. Okay? So this kind of threat usually occurs when the time between conducting treatment and doing experiment is too long. Okay? So in that for that for that for, for experimental study. Six to eight weeks is suitable. Eh? So you don't do uh, unless unless depend on your research. So in experimental we don't do more than uh, six months or seven, except eh, except for the science study. Maybe in the science area, so uh, those of those in science, they need longer time. Eh? Let's say they are doing experimental on the animal, so they need to the uh, they need for the animal. To whatever, so maybe in it needs to take for the six to eight months eh, to get the result. So that one is different. But then in the social side, we try to avoid to for doing this measurement for too long. Okay, and then maturation. Maturation meaning that during the your research, uh, okay, maturation uh, exit if you participate in the one group become more experienced, type board and and then participate in the other group. So uh, let's say if your research is too long, okay, let's say for six months, okay, so maybe at, at the fourth month, they get bored, eh? or maybe they get something happen, whatever, so they get bored. Eh? And maybe they, they don't feel that using this technology is okay. Eh? Okay, so in that, 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 in that case, we have the maturation problem eh? so uh, the similar if your result if you if you're conducting study in let's say you are conducting study at the end of this year 2022 and you continue let's say the eight week is four four weeks in the December and the four week in the January next year eh? when you need to understand that the, the, the years change 
meaning that the student for the 2023 they get they are one year old. Yeah? So in terms of the maturation also will cause their matura maturation. Yeah? So these are the things that you need to be considered on the maturation. And then on the statistical regression. Okay, uh, a regression trait may be present whenever change is studied in a group that is extremely low or high in its pre-intention. Okay, maybe for your pre-test, student uh, have a very high performance or student have a very low performance. Eh? So basically, uh, this will be the outliers for your studies. Eh? So uh, therefore, when you do the pre-test, you need to do the analyze, analysis earlier. Eh? So from the analysis, we will identify who are the outliers. So in an experimental study, these outliers, outliers can be student will have very high performance and student will be a low performance. This students should be discrete and not be included in your research because this, uh, this student will affect your finding. Okay? Because you have a very good student and towards the end for the post test, the student will be score, uh, will have a similar, uh, will call the higher score. So it's not because of intervention because the student is good. Or the student is too weak and towards the end, uh, even though you introduce intervention, they also might possibility have also a very low performance. Eh? So you need to take care of this one. Okay, so selection bias. So, okay, for selection bias for a true experimental design, so uh, we can avoid the selection bias. So because we, we if you are doing a matching pairs, so you can you can you can avoid this biasness. Eh? But then for a quasi experimental, you you take the student as a group, yeah? so you cannot you cannot change them. You cannot you cannot uh, we cannot we cannot send them to the control group and so on. But then in for the selection by how to prevent this one for a quasi experimental, you have the pretest. Yeah? So you have the pretest, then you do the you do the analysis and to make sure that both group uh, is equal is not significant in terms of your pre-test uh, performance. Okay? So you can also uh, avoid this selection bias by doing the pre-test and you start to eliminate student that is the considered as the outliers. Okay. Okay. Experimental mortality. Okay. When, when, uh, when during your experimental, let's say you have 30 students, Somehow, two of your students pass away during experimental, right? So, or two of your students change to another school, or two of your students not attending for your class. Okay, so you cannot include this student who are not attending your class or pass away as your respondent. So these are the mortality. Mortality is if they're dropping out of the participant. So dropping out can be the student are not interested anymore or the result can be transferred to other class and so on. Eh? So therefore, if you have a very minimum numbers of respondents, let's say you have nearly 25 students. So if three of them uh, have this mortality effect, so you have you have already have the less respondent eh, for the group. Okay. Okay, we have the John Henry effect. The okay, John Henry effect refers to the bias introduced to an experiment where the member of the control group are aware that they are being compared. Eh? So this one you need to be understand, especially the control group and the treatment group. Okay, and you need to understand these two group uh, side by side class. Eh? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, they, they are not far away, and maybe they also a good friend among these two. So then after the school hour, the, the student will say, uh, they will they will have a further discussion that they say that. Hey, my teacher teach mathematics using computers. Uh, how about why, why you, your, your, your group didn't, your teacher didn't use the computers? And so on, this question will be arrived from time to time. And towards the end, uh, the, the experimental group uh, have a, uh, may, maybe they, 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 now they, they realize that this class only using the computer group and the other one is not computing, uh, not using the uh, computers. Yeah? So they realize that they are the experimental group. And then, sorry. And then uh, in, relate, in the relation to the this John Henry effect, 
we have the Hotron effect. So the Hotron effect occurs when individual adjust their behavior as a result of me watch or observe. So, okay, let's see. Uh, the, these two groups, eh, one of the, uh, the, the student in the control group, they realized that the teachers are not uh, using computers to their class, whereby the other uh, class using the computers. So then, and then they notice that uh, the teachers are doing a research on this one. So maybe they, 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 they have a discussion among the one, then so they said, okay, let us prove that our class is better. Even though we are not taught using the computer, we can perform better. So, so in this case, uh, you have the web quadrata hot one effect. Eh? So after they, they, they realize that uh, they are they are being watched and also they are being tested. Okay. And then uh, for the testing thread, as if one group of participants react differently to taking uh, to the taking the pretest. So so uh, uh, okay for the pretest and post-test, okay. They, they also another thing, if you do the pretest and post-test, the pretest question and post-test, the question should be uh, similar. If, especially if you want to uh, you want to look the differences between the pretest and post-test. Okay? So you need to make sure that the pretest question and post-test question is similar. Okay? Similar, okay? not the same. Or some, some, some researcher or some supervisor, they say they must be a similar. And uh, they must be a same. Uh, question only you just uh, rotating the uh, the question rotating the 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 the, the sequence of the questions eh? so in this case uh, the duration between the pretest and post also need to be take account eh? so if your research is only three weeks so maybe during your post test the student still can remember eh? what are the questions from the pretest so towards the end uh, you can see that the student is not only is not because of the they can do the, the test, but maybe they still remember what what are the question that uh, been asked during the pretest. Eh? So we call, we have this uh, testing effect, and then also we need to have the measurement instrument. So make sure that uh, instrument type for the match of the on the way it match. Okay? So for the instrument, uh, for the instrument, so you make sure that the instrument use is valid. Okay? So this one you can avoid by using a validation and also using the pilot study. So this this uh, measuring instrument is also not for experimental study, but then it's for a survey study and correlation study. You need to make sure that every instrument used in your research is valid. Okay? So you need to have, you need to be picked from a good uh, instrument, eh? and also you need to be, if you are translate, a good be a good translation, or also you need to be from a good validation. All right. Okay, and then uh, we have another effect on the social interaction. Okay, we have, we have actually we have twelve, we have past twelve. So you need to make sure that uh, the student from the both group they don't interact. They don't interact this one. And okay, lastly, we have the external validity. So external validity refers to uh, to which you can apply conclusion of the scientific research in other fields. So let's say for my, in case of my research, okay, my student conduct uh, using module to one of the state eh, in Kelantan, for example. So in, for the external validity, whether the same module be tested in other this uh, country, no country, other state in Malaysia, whether we can have the similar result or not. Okay? So that one is the external validity. All right. Uh, okay, these are some of the advantages eh, for doing the experimental studies. So you can read up this one. All right. Uh, okay, I think I have finished this one. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, I have time to, to read uh, to answer your question here, okay. Uh, maybe back to you, Afika. Uh, okay, in the in, in, in meantime, I will upload my what you call that? my slide. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Fauzi, for a very interesting knowledge sharing. 
um, experimental research design is um, is a very interesting uh, subject and has always been one of my passions, actually. So I think I can speak on everyone's behalf that it is such an opportunity to be able to learn from you today, Prof. So thank you very much. Um, okay, um, I was uh, I I was made aware and I was informed that I kind of broke out. <laughs> due to internet connection problem during the introduction um, earlier. So I hope um, everyone can hear me right now. Uh, okay, all right. Thank you, Gao Jian Hong. Okay, all right. So I would just like to inform you a little bit about um, Prof Fauzi, just in case you might want to see him and meet him for consultations, okay? So Professor Fauzi is actually based at the Department of Foundation of Education, Faculty of Educational Studies, UPM, yeah? So his area of expertise actually includes information technology, multimedia education, and of course, experimental research in social science as well. Okay, so a little bit about Prof Fauzi. All right, so because we have such a very limited time, uh, I'm afraid we are not able to open for another question and answer session, okay? Um, so before we end the session, I would really like to thank um, Kate UPM again for inviting us, all right? And I hope this collaboration will continue and prosper even more in the future, inshallah. Okay, so thank you again, uh, Prof Fauzi, for your precious time with us today. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your kind participation and attention, ladies and gentlemen. So um, with that, we end our session for today and I hope um, to see you all again very soon, inshallah. Stay safe and goodbye everyone. <laughs>